Released in 2019, the custom arc map Valguero has lots of new things to show and play around with, introducing a particularly stylistic and unique new climbing-based dinosaur, along with new creature variants, biomes, caves, and one of the hardest standard boss arenas of the custom arcs. Beyond the unique aesthetic of the map taking place inside a large valley as opposed to an island, Valguero tries many new things that haven't really been seen in these kinds of maps. This includes having a vast, terrifying underground ocean beneath the map itself, an aberration zone combined with the regular map, and an expansive snow biome among a couple new types as well. As always, if you end up liking this video, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to help support me and keep these videos coming. So without further ado, welcome back to the Evolution Guide series as we cover the great Arc El Guero. To begin, I'm going to go over a couple of Valguero's distinct new biomes when we compare them to custom arcs or non-story maps. However, first I'll briefly go over familiar biomes that make up most of this map to not leave them out completely. These include the boreal forests, jungles, redwoods, and snow mountains, and Valguero also has large lakes that make up a significant chunk of the map. Now let's talk about the unique and the kind of newer biomes. These include the White Cliff or Chalk Hills biome, the Tundra, the Underground Abyss, and finally the Aberration Zone. So let's talk a little bit about them. The White Cliffs biome is a lively and very saturated region, though I'll always feel at home here. It's just inviting to me, aside from the constant Allosaurus and of course our furry raptor friends that we'll get into later. With ruins of forgotten civilizations, the White Cliffs provide a mysterious and beautiful landscape to explore, just in the southeast region of the map. Next, the tundra biome in the west side of the map is cold, but not too cold. Featuring many resource caves, though with many carnivores too, the rich density of resources is kind of juxtaposed by the high-risk nature of the region, and thus is particularly good for skilled survivors who can deal with the threats and reap the rewards. And by threats, I mean constant carnos, UDs, direbles, you name it. <laughs> but while the tundra is dangerous, it pales in comparison to the abyss, a fully underground ocean that spans the entire middle portion of the map. With only a couple entrances into it, the abyss is where all the most dangerous and largest ocean creatures can be found, though it has its fair share of resources as well. And in the same vein with being beneath the surface, the Aberration Zone, or otherwise called the Emerald Forest on Valguero, has a very similar aesthetic to the fan-favorite story map. It too has Carquinos, Ravagers, Roll Rats, and Light Pets, while unfortunately missing Rock Drakes officially. But nonetheless a cool area indeed, and definitely gives me Aberration vibes. So with the primary new biomes out of the way, let's talk a little bit about DLC content. Similar to how Ragnarok allowed survivors to unlock Scorched Earth engrams on the map, Valguero allows both Scorched Earth and Aberration content, which at the time of release was significant since it stood as the map with the most amount of unlockable engrams at a time. A lot like Ragnarok, Valguero also has its own wyvern trench, but this one, while being large, only holds fire and ice wyvern nests. Despite having a more limited selection of wyverns though, this means that Valguero is a far easier map to get ice wyverns on than Ragnarok for people who like ice wyverns, for some reason. Now on the topic of creatures, Valguero adds three in total, kinda. First up is the Deinonychus, which is a very feathery raptor creature that has nests in the Chalk Hills biome. After carefully grabbing their little eggs and making a run for it, Deinonychus can be raised and bred together later on to do all kinds of things like climbing walls, very strangely, or jumping on large creatures and clawing and chomping the hell out of them. They can also do a pack screech, buffing their allies' speed and damage if in a group, and can even charge up a big cop. As you can probably tell, they're pretty agile. Beyond the Deinonychus though, Valguero also adds two new rock elemental types the Ice Golem, and the Chalk Golem. Ice Golems are found in the snow biome, just vibin'. They do what you'd guess they do. And the Chalk Golems are... I like this rock. Oh, it's a rock golem! Dude. Thanks, I love you, I like you too, give me a hug. <laughs> also just like regular golems, basically. So yeah, Valguero really just adds one new creature. A little disappointing compared to Ragnarok, but at least it's not the center. 
In a similar way to Ragnarok's mini-bosses, Valguero has one type of encounter, though it's more of an open-world fight rather than a dungeon-crawling battle. A version of the Broodmother can be fought as a roaming boss just inside this crevice in the Redwoods, in the lair. This version of the Broodmother is weaker and doesn't really give great rewards, but it's there and you can fight it if you so choose to, just know that it's still incredibly strong nonetheless, so you will want to bring some pretty strong stuff. While Valguero doesn't have much in the creature department, it makes up for it by having loads of artifact and non-artifact caves. For me, these have been some of the most memorable, but that's mainly a consequence of having played a lot more on this map than any other custom arcs personally. So just to fill out this guide a little bit more, since it is very short compared to those prior, here are some of the most popular and useful non-artifact caves before we get into the artifacts themselves. Now, finally, when it comes to the artifacts themselves, though, Valguero only requires three of them for the Gamma Boss Arena, three for Beta, and four different ones for Alpha. These are all completely different artifacts as well. Starting with the Artifact of the Destroyer, it can be found at these cords just literally in the middle of nowhere. Next, the Cunning Artifact can be found at these cords, and it rests right inside this little snowy cave. Not too hard at all, you just probably want fur. The Crag Artifact is also inside a little cave, and it's just a little bit harder to get since there's lava and some jumps that you can't actually make without you know, parachutes or grapples or glider, something like that. Grapples would be my go-to. Nestled within the Wyvern Trench is the Skylord Artifact. This one you'll pretty much need a flyer to get to, and because of how dangerous it is, I'd recommend something very, very fast. There are Wyverns all over the place in there. The Artifact of the Gatekeeper can be found in the radiated portion of the Aberration Zone at these courts. Keep in mind it's quite the journey to or from any of the actual entrances into the Aberration Zone in the first place. Both the Devourer and Brute Artifacts can be found in the Lost Temple Cave and are in different areas inside it. One of them you also have to break a rock to get to. And lastly, the Artifacts of the Strong, Immune, and Pack can be found in the Spider's Lair Cave at these courts. Seeing as this isn't a walkthrough on each of the caves, I'm not going to tell you how to navigate this one, but sometimes these things are more fun to just figure out on your own. Just make sure you bring a gas mask and a lot of weapons and ammo. Some creatures also fit in here, so they can be a good option as well. And that basically sums up the artifacts. Now, since there are so many artifacts on the map, you're going to need some time and maybe even multiple days to collect them all, ideally on a well-performing server. And that's where G-Porter comes in. Are you looking for your own ARC server or a server for another game? Well, look no further. Gportal is a great server provider that has fast, well-performing servers, incredibly responsive support, and great pricing options as well. If you're looking to avoid the hassle of setting up and configuring your own ARC server, go ahead and use my referral link in the description to get your own Gportal server today and receive a 10% discount on Gportal servers while helping to support me as a creator at the same time. I really appreciate it. And of course, thank you to Gportal for sponsoring this video. Now, of course, the reason to collect artifacts is for nothing other than bosses, or unless you just want to put them on display in your base. So let's talk a little bit about how Valguero handles the boss arena, and this time around, it is tough. I mean, really, really tough. On either the Gamma, Beta, or Alpha difficulty, once teleported to the arena, you fight the Dragon, the Manticore, and the Megapithecus all at the same time. Ideally, you want to aggro one or two at a time, but sometimes that doesn't go to plan. What is it doing? It's stuck, man. What in time? I think we just got to go for it then. Yep. So what's the strategy then? Well, if you have three people like we did, then I recommend one person on a Uteranus, two on a Deinonychus, and the rest, if any, on Therizinos. As with most bosses, Theries are the way to go if they have good stats. Saddles aren't always too hard to find, and since they can be fed veggie cakes, they're going to last longer than something like a Rex. The Valguero fight is really freaking hard, but it's also one of the most rewarding. After defeating the Dragon, Manticore, and Megapithecus, the full element reward is 90 on Gamma, 255 on Beta, and 520 on Alpha. 
So needless to say, Valguero is pretty awesome. Though I'm a little biased because if you can't tell, I really like this map. While I definitely covered the map in a pretty surface level regard here, that's more or less what I seek to do with these evolution guides nowadays anyway. If you've been watching them since the beginning, you should know a lot more than you did before, and like I said in the rag guide, I don't need to repeat myself, and I'm not trying to waste your time. But with that, thanks everyone so much for watching! If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon, all that good stuff, and if you're feeling generous, you can become a patron with the link below to help support me as a content creator. Stay tuned for more Evo guides, survival stories, and all the rest soon, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck, survivors.